Here we are in exercise chapter three, number three. Now, the idea here is to explore the concept of subspaces, and in particular, that a subspace is nothing more than a set of linear weighted combinations of some set of vectors. Now, in the previous couple of exercises, we were taking a very small number of linear weighted combinations with just one scalar per vector. The idea of a subspace is you repeat that uh, process conceptually, but instead of just taking one uh, scalar, you take an infinity of scalars from minus infinity to plus infinity. So we are not going to take all points between minus infinity and plus infinity. That would take a really long time, like the life of the universe. It would take more computational power than there is in the universe. So we're not actually going to do that. Uh, that's like the theory. The application, how we are going to visualize it, is by generating a bunch of uh, random scalars between minus four and plus four. Okay, so uh, let me take a step back. So we are going to define a vector set, and that vector set contains only one vector. It's the vector one, three. And now what we are going to do is plot points that are randomly chosen on the subspace that is defined by the basis vector one comma three. So we're going to generate 100 numbers at random between minus 4 and plus 4. Those are our scalars. And then we will compute the vector scalar multiplication. So scaled combinations of this vector, or combinations, it's only one vector, but scaled versions of this vector. 100 of them chosen at random and plot all of those points. And what do those points look like? Are they scattered everywhere? Do they form a cloud? Uh, are they on a line? Well, not surprisingly, they form a line. And that line is uh, all points on a subspace that is defined by the basis vector 1, 3, which would be this vector going up here. So you can imagine that there is an infinite number of these points. It goes from infinity down this way to infinity up this way. And that is the subspace. Okay, so then drawing these random points, uh, I hope, will help you conceptualize the idea of a subspace. So that's the first part of this exercise. And then the next part of this exercise is exactly the same concept, but we are moving up in dimensionality. So instead of working with a two-dimensional plane, we are going to work with a three-dimensional space. And instead of just having one vector in 2D, we're going to have two vectors in 3D. And these are the two vectors. Now, we cannot just take one scalar or 100 of random selections of one scalar because we have two vectors. So we need a pair of scalars. One scalar run, you know, randomly chosen to multiply this vector and another randomly chosen scalar to multiply this vector. So that means we will have a 100 by two um, matrix or a set of pairs for these two vectors. And then you don't really see it here, but this is like a, a flat sheet of paper. When I show this in Python, it, it will, it, we can render it in 3D and we can, we can move it around in space. And you will see that two vectors in a three-dimensional space defines a plane. So all of these randomly chosen points actually fall exactly on a plane, which is a two-dimensional subspace of this ambient three-dimensional environment. All right, very nice. Let's switch to Python and see how this looks in code. So here is our vector set. It's you know, we can call it a set. It's really just one vector. This is another one of these cases, uh, which I discussed in some of the exercises from the previous chapter, from chapter two, as uh, another one of these cases where uh, orientation doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if you create this as a row vector or a column vector, or uh, as I have done here, a, an array without any orientation. That's fine for this particular application because we are going to be using these points as coordinates to plot lines. Okay, so this is the range. And now here I'm generating the scalars. These are random numbers drawn from a uniform distribution between x0 and x1. So uh, I soft coded this so that, you know, if you like, you can try changing this to have a top value of 14. Actually, I'll keep it like this because why not? Uh, and then we're going to grab 100 of these. Okay, so then the plotting code is fairly simple. So we have our 
um, vector of scalars, so just a, a list of 100 scalars. And for each one of those, we create point P. So you can conceptualize this as a vector. We are drawing it as a point, so I'm only calling it P. Um, you could draw it as a vector, as a line, but I think it, it doesn't make sense for this particular visualization because obviously all the lines are going to be overlapping. Okay, so we compute this uh, linear weighted combination of uh, of the, the scalars and the vectors in set A, which is just one vector. And then we plot that as a point. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. And here we get, uh, so on the x-axis, we go from uh, minus four. Uh, actually, it looks like we only go up to minus four here, but this is because of the uh, axis limits here. So in fact, okay, so here you see a broader picture. So uh, the x-axis now goes from minus 4 to plus 14, and the y-axis goes up to 40-something, whatever. Uh, so here we see that we started with one vector, and all of the uh, points randomly selected scalars. In theory, these are scalars that go from minus infinity to plus infinity. Here we just randomly selected some. The point is that all of these fall on a line, and this is the visualization of a subspace that we can create using a vector as a basis vector, as a ruler for this subspace. So this is the picture that you should have in mind when you are thinking about subspaces. Okay, so this was for panel A uh, for the vector, and now we are going to do the same thing for panel B. So this involves a, a, a library called Plotly, and I'm not really going to talk too much about the Python uh, implementation. But just to show you, again, we have now two vectors. These are the two vectors that I uh, specified in the exercise text. Again, these do not have any orientation just because that's not necessary for, uh, for this particular application. Okay, and then the rest of it is the same. Uh, so we still have, uh, actually, I think I will, just to keep the uh, visualization more manageable. I'm going to set this back to minus four to plus four. Okay, so now we have uh, these random scalars of size 100 by two. So we're going to draw 100 points, and each point is defined by the linear weighted combination between these two vectors, where the weights are coming from these numbers that are just generated purely at random. Okay, and now uh, there's two vectors, but the vectors are in 3D. They are in a three-dimensional ambient space. So therefore, the points actually need to be uh, 100 by 3, so the x, y, z coordinates. Okay, now, uh, otherwise, this is the same. We take v1 times this scalar plus v2 times this scalar. So this linear weighted combination gives us um, a, a set of points, and now we, we don't draw each one individually. We collect them here in the for loop and then draw them all at once. Okay, and now uh, we can, you know, I'm, I'm left clicking on the mouse and moving this thing around. So now you appreciate, you know, here you don't really get the sense that it's a two dimensional plane, but when I rotate this around, you can see uh, in, in theory, this is a perfectly flat uh, subspace. It's like a, a infinitesimally thin piece of paper. Uh, but obviously, you know, the dots have some width. So that's why it looks like it has some third dimension going this way, but that's just a, a visualization issue. Okay, so there we see that. There was one final aspect to this exercise, which is to repeat the 3D case here, but setting the second vector to be one half of the first vector. So what does that mean? So if we go back and look at these two vectors, you can see that they are different from each other. So you put them together in a set and that forms a linearly independent set, meaning we cannot derive one vector as a scaled version of the other vector. So now what we are going to do is change the code so that the second vector is one half of this. So it's going to be, you know, uh, one half, 2.5 and, uh, or sorry, one and a half, 2.5 and one half here. And the question is what's going to happen? And, uh, you know, let's, let's discuss this uh, before we, we actually test it empirically. So what's going to happen is that the two vectors are already collinear. They already lie on the same line. 
And that means that any linear weighted combination of the two vectors is no different from some linear weighted combination of one vector. So in fact, this is going to turn from a plane into a line. Now it's not gonna be a line just like this because this is two dimensional, but it will be a line. Okay, so let's see. And that we can obtain by uh, just uncommenting this line. So you see, I have this three, five, one, and this is one and a half, two and a half, and one half again. Okay, so rerun this code and voila. So it looks like it's just a point, but if we uh, rotate this around, then you can see that it's actually a line. It is just a straight line in three dimensions. So it's a one dimensional subspace that is embedded in a three dimensional ambient space. So I hope you enjoyed working through this exercise, and I hope that you feel that you have a better connection or a better understanding of uh, linear weighted combinations and how those relate to vector subspaces.